Okay, the nut is a 21, the bolt's an 18. Pull it out, goes in there, and now you can pull this out of the, out so it's loose, okay? Now we're gonna raise it up, and I'm gonna pop the axle out of the rear differential, and I'm gonna put a bungee cord on it to hold it so it doesn't go flying out. Okay, the flange will have a race on it. It'll look like that on the flange. Flange is just not very long, it just sticks out. So stick your flange in the vise. All right in here. Take a die grinder, cut it at an angle so you can get in there a pretty good cut. Once you get it cut pretty through pretty good, get a nice beefy chisel, stick a chisel in there and smack it with a hammer and what you're gonna do is you're gonna crack it. And when you crack it, it allows this bearing race to spread open and you can just pull it right off or tap it with your hammer with the chisel. It'll come right off. So that's how you get the bearing race off of your flange. Now that you got the flange off, on this side, there's a big snap ring. So you need to get yourself a big snap ring pliers. Before you put your snap ring pliers on it, take a screwdriver and a hammer and tap on that snap ring to make sure it's loose. If it's loose, then you can put your snap rings on it, pliers on it, and squeeze them together and get a little fine screwdriver in there. When you squeeze it together, stick it inside the gaps and work your way around with it and pull that snap ring out. Okay, then you wanna get on this side and you want to get something like this, go on this side and push on that. Push down on that race onto your, uh, your, your press. Press that bearing out. The bearing will come out this direction and make sure you have something to go over this that the bearing will go into like that four, four and a half inch pipe over top, okay? And once you get the bearing out, then you wanna press in your bearing the same way, using your old bearing. And use this to press your bearing back in, okay? Something like that, and like that. Press it back in. Once you've got it pressed in all the way down, then you can put your snap ring on. Okay? So now, time to put your hub in there. This, the flange. When you're pressing that flange down on there, what you want to do is, you want to get another one of these. This goes like that. So put this on your press, okay? And you wanna press that against it like that. So you're pressing against that old bearing, not your wheel studs, okay? When you're, and then you wanna get like this one to go on that. And you wanna press against that. So when you're pressing up against this race, and here, you're, you're pushing the whole thing down. If you just press down like this with something, you're gonna cause this race here to pop up and you're gonna damage it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna push against this race on the new bearing, like that. Something like that to keep up the gap. And when you press it down, you're gonna walk that bearing up inside there. Not the bearing, but the flange up in there till it stops and give it an extra oomph to make sure it's in there. You gotta have this in there pushing against that race. Otherwise, this race will come up and be loose and you don't want that, okay? So that's how you, you do it. I'm sorry I couldn't show you. I got a couple other videos on pressing bearings in. It's basically basically the same thing. Okay? 
All right, so now I'm gonna replace the seal. Next, you wanna stick your pry bar up into that seal like this, okay? To pop it out. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick your pry bar in here like that. Like this, okay? Stick it in there and pop that seal off, okay? Once you get it out, then you gotta go get your new one and match it up. Okay, I had to go to Jaguar to get the seal. That's the number, $45 a piece. All right, so now I'll clean up that area up there in the axle, the housing, and then I'll tap this in with my little hammer. I'll go, I'll put it up there and I'll tap around it <clears throat> with my little ball peen hammer. If I uh, use something else, I'll let you know. This is my favorite ball peen hammer. <clears throat> put in all my seals with that. I stuck the hammer through this hole, put my hand up in here and held the seal and tapped the seal in just to get it started. And then I stuck the hammer up through the bigger hole and worked my way around it and tapped it in equally all the way around and all the way. Just keep on going until it bombs out. And you'll hear the difference in the sound when it's bombed out, okay? So now, now that that's in, I can put my shaft up through there and uh, put some grease on your your input shaft. Clean this up, put some grease on it. And then uh, on this end, you wanna put wipe that up and put some anesthes on that end. Okay, guide your shaft up in there inside the seal. Try not to hit the sides of the seal with the shaft. Get it started into the uh, notches on the shaft, into the differential. Then once you get it in there and started, then you can take, hold your caliper up out of the way, and grab your shaft, and act like a little uh, slide hammer, and pound it in there till it bottoms out. And this is what it should look like when it's bottomed out all the way in there like that equally to the other side okay so now, now now that that's in now we can go and put our knuckle on okay stick your knuckle up there stick your shaft inside the hub a little bit and get your lower control arm bolt in there and you can push it all the way up and get your nut started on your half shaft. Put your nut on your lower bolt for your control arm. And then next you want to do is run up your axle nut a little bit to pull it up on the splines to help line everything else up. And then we'll work on the upper ball joint. Put some anesthes on the threads. Pry down on the upper control arm. Push the ball joint into the knuckle and get your nut started as best as you can hopefully it doesn't spit on you too much and if it does spin too much and you can and you got a little bit of area to put your eight millimeter wrench on the end of the stud so you can tighten the nut that's great okay my stud was turning on my nut that's what i did was I took a pry bar I pried it down got some needle nose small needle nose vice grips Stuck it between the nut and the knuckle. And then I ran the uh, nut up till it hits the vice grips. Now I got enough of the stud sticking out that I can actually put my eight millimeter wrench or five sixteenths on there and hold the stud and then run my nut up. Okay, you got your upper ball joint nut tight. Remember that was uh, an 18. You want to tighten that to like 60 foot pounds and then you want to tighten up your lower control arm bolt and nut and tighten that one to like 65 foot pounds and also you got your toe bar and put your 
kept that in there, that long bolt, that'd be like 35 foot pounds, okay? So now that you got the knuckle mounted, we still gotta do the axle nut. I'm gonna do that until I get done putting the brakes on. Okay, so everything's getting ready. So now next we need to do is clean the hub up, get this all, all the surface grime and rust off of it. Same thing from inside the rotor, because that will give it <clears throat> not a true surface. So you need to clean that surface up. And once you get it cleaned up, you can put a little bit of film of anti-seize on it. Okay, <clears throat> there's the rotor. Got cleaned up with a angle diagram with a <clears throat> sandpaper disc. Here's my hub. Put a fine layer of anti-seize on it. And don't forget, if you had <clears throat> that large rust ridge right here and you ground it down, make sure that's where you put right here. So you can put your caliper back on. Okay, <clears throat> got your caliper on. Tighten your caliper bracket bolts, the 15 millimeter head ones, just 75 foot pounds. Then you wanna put on your ABS wire, put it in there and put your little bolt back in there, a little eight millimeter. That was the seven millimeter head bolt. <clears throat> put that in there. Okay, then you want to push your rotor up against the hub as tight as you can get it and inspect all the way around to make sure your dust shield is not hitting the rotor. And the next you want to do is tighten your axle nut. That spec is 300 foot pounds. <clears throat> I've seen 200 to 300 and you're not supposed to reuse the nut. <clears throat> okay. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to torque it to 300. I'm going to torque it to 200. I'm going to see how that feels. All right. <clears throat> so I got my torque wrench on here. Torque is going to go this way, which means the rotor is going to turn. So what I do is I stick a screwdriver inside the fins of the rotor, and then we'll come up here and hit the brake caliper bracket, and that'll hold it from keep it from turning. So now I can use my torque wrench to torque it. Okay. I torqued it to 200. It was kind of tough. So I'm gonna compromise, I'm gonna go 225, okay? Cause 300 foot pounds, from what I've always seen on these axles, they're never more than 200 foot pounds. So it doesn't look like it's any bigger bearing or anything to me when I did the wheel bearing. So that's good enough for me, 225, I'll take it. I reused my nut, I'm not supposed to. But if you want, you can get a punch, a chisel, and smack it one of these little tabs into the into the threads a little bit to help act like more of a lock nut. All right, and that will complete this operation for the axle shaft and the seal. And I did the bearing, but I had a didn't really show you how to do the bearing, but kind of did. All right, so now all you need to do is raise it up. And check your rear differential fluid. Okay, the fill plug's on the rear of the housing. It's a 3 8 square drive. Get up there with your ratchet, loosen it up, and then you want to remove it. Okay, it's got a magnet on it to clean the magnet off. What you want to do is fill it up so it's coming out. When it's coming out pretty good, put the plug back in and just let it sit for a little bit so it settles inside there. And then you can pull the plug back out and let the excess drain out. And you just want to have a real fine stream coming out or a drip, drip, drip. Okay. It says to use synthetic. So I'll go over and find out what synthetic fluid I have. It's either 75140 or 8590. Depends. I'm gonna stick my finger in there and see how low it is. Okay, I use 7590 synthetic. I remember that 75140 is usually for the big trucks. So 7590 would be for the cars. And I put some in there and it was coming out. So I put my plug back in it. Let it sit for a little bit and then just go ahead and then 
pull it out and see how it's coming out. That's that's good enough. That's good enough for me. Usually it's supposed to be like a an eighth inch to a quarter below the fill. This is fine. So now I'll put the plug back in there and then I'll tighten it up with my ratchet. And then I'll go ahead and clean it off a little bit so that way it doesn't look like it's still leaking. All right, so then that's it for that. And then what you need to do is put your tire on, lower it back down to the ground and torque them to 100 foot pounds. The lug nuts and that will complete your rear differential half shaft axle seal knuckle and a little bit about the bearing okay if i helped you out that's awesome hopefully you can help me out by subscribing and i appreciate it thank you